the value of gammas or, or the set of gammas that are required around the outside of the airfoil uh, to make that airfoil streamline of the flow. Uh, we showed previously we can compute the velocity at any point in the flow and the pressure at any point in the flow. flow. And now uh, that means we can also compute the forces and moments on that airfoil. Now there are two different ways to do that. Uh, one of them is that uh, since we know the, the pressure at every point, we could integrate uh, the pressure uh, CP around the airfoil. Uh, and then the second is to use the Kutta Joukowsky law. And that's the approach that we're going to take here. Um, so from the Kutta Joukowsky law, we know that uh, we know that the lift from some panel. Uh, per unit span is equal to rho v infinity times the circulation on that panel, which the circulation can be computed from uh, the integral along that panel from c equals zero to the length of the panel of the, the strength gamma of c d c. Okay, so we've got a panel over here. And remember, we assumed that these, um, we'll call this panel I, um, and we assumed that the strength of that panel varied linearly uh, from gamma of I to gamma of I plus one, okay? But we can integrate along that panel um, uh, the, the gamma as a function of C, and remember we aligned C here, um, with that panel, but we integrate that along the length and then multiply that by rho v infinity, and that will tell us the lift um, produced by that panel. Okay, so then the coefficient of lift uh, from that panel is equal to the lift from that panel over one half rho v infinity squared c which when we plug this in here, uh, the rows will cancel and one of the V infinities will cancel and what we're left with is two over V infinity C times the integral of C equals zero up to L of gamma of C D C. Okay, now in our case, like I said, we assumed a linear variation and so we can plug that in uh, inside of that integral. So we have 2v infinity c times uh, the integral from c equals 0 to l of, and now we're just going to put in that linear variation, which would be gamma of i plus gamma of i plus 1 minus gamma of i over l i. So that's the slope of the increase in, uh, in vorticity and uh, multiplied by c and we're going to integrate that over dxc. And so once we do that, uh, we end up with um, L sub i over Cv infinity times gamma i plus gamma i plus one. Okay, so this is our, our, uh, our uh, differential lift. Um, that is produced by that panel. So to get the total lift coefficient, we simply need to sum uh, sum all of the uh, uh, all of the influence from all of the panels. And so the total CL is simply the summation from i equals one to n minus one. Remember, n is the number of points. We have n minus one panels, and uh, so we're going to sum up all of these which then can be written as one over C V infinity times the summation from I equals one to N minus one. Uh, L I times gamma I plus gamma I plus one. 
Okay, so this is our final equation here. Once we have all of the gammas, we can usually, uh, or we can simply use that here in this equation um, to compute the total lift coefficient on the complete airfoil. Okay, and then the pitching moment is actually a, a similar process, except that we're also tracking a moment arm relative to the origin. I'm not gonna work through that. I'll just write out the equation here for the pitching moment about the leading edge, which, uh, which we're assuming is at the origin. Um, so that's going to be equal to minus one over three, three uh, C squared V infinity uh, times the summation from I equals one to N minus one of L I times uh, two X I gamma I plus X I gamma i plus 1 plus x of i plus 1 gamma i plus 2 x i plus 1 gamma i plus 1 all times the cosine of alpha and then inside of the bracket still plus 2 y I gamma I plus Y I gamma I plus one plus Y I plus one times gamma I plus two Y I plus one gamma I plus one times the sine of alpha. And we close that bracket there. Okay, so this is the equation for the pitching moment about the leading edge of the airfoil. And of course, once we have that, we can compute the, once we have the lift and the pitching moment, we can compute the pitching moment at any point um, along the airfoil, including at the quarter cord, if we like. Um, now, one thing to note is that uh, when we're looking at forces and moments from an inviscid solver like this, or a potential flow solver, uh, we and, and only in 2D, we're only going to get lift and pitching moment. The potential flow will never, in for 2D flow, will never uh, predict a drag coefficient. So, so there's no way for us to estimate drag, and that's because in two dimensions, the only drag uh, comes from uh, viscosity or shear stress along the surface of the airfoil. So, uh, so these are actually the only two, uh, the only force we can get, and the only moment we can get is a lift force and a pitching moment and of course we could uh, we could look at axial and normal forces we could take that lift force and rotate it into the x and y directions and uh, get an axial and normal uh, components due to angle of attack um, and we can look at the pitching moment at any location but these are the only um, this is the only force that we can get the net force and the the pitching moment um, in, of this airfoil in, uh, in an inviscid uh, potential flow.